When studying organic chemistry, I often advise students to think mechanistically. Try to get inside the head of the reaction by thinking about how its mechanism proceeds. This will give you insight into things like the reaction rate, when multiple outcomes are possible, how those multiple outcomes come about, and what we expect the major product to be, and whether the reaction will actually work as advertised, as I like to say. And in thinking mechanistically, it's quite frequently important to think about the structures and stabilities of reactive intermediates. We'll be looking at relatively unstable, typically ionic intermediates, and thinking about their stability, their relative stability. For example, if we're comparing related reactions and thinking about relative rates or relative outcomes or that kind of thing. In this video, we're going to take a look at our first reactive intermediate, the carbocation or trigonal carbocation with three single bonds. And we're going to look at stability trends and how we think about the structure and stability of carbocations and how we think about their reactivity as a result of their structure in this video. So let's start by defining what we mean by a carbocation. A carbocation is a reactive intermediate with positive charge centered on carbon. Pretty logical definition there. A trigonal carbocation in particular is the most common type of carbocation. These have three single bonds and no other bonds linked to the cationic center. This makes the hybridization of that carbon sp2 and leads to trigonal planar geometry. This also leads to an empty 2p orbital at the cationic carbon. This is very important because that empty 2p orbital is a site of electrophilicity. When a nucleophile comes along, it bumps right into that empty 2p orbital to form a new bond to the cationic center. Now, when it comes to the stabilities of carbocations. We're interested in structural features that make carbocations more or less stable. And one of the most common and more important has to do with the number of carbon groups connected to the cationic center versus hydrogens. CH3 cation is actually among the least stable carbocations. As we replace those H's in the CH3 or methyl cation with carbon groups, for example, here we have one CH3, here we have two, and here we have three, the stability of the cationic center goes up. And this is more or less an inductive effect. Those alkyl groups are inductively donating, and so they donate electron density to the cationic center, spreading out the positive charge on some level and stabilizing the cation. So more substituted cations are more stable. Very important point to keep in mind. And of course, resonance delocalization as a general stability factor is going to stabilize carbocations by spreading out the positive charge. So more stable even than tert-butyl cation is an allylic cation, a tertiary cation with an adjacent double bond such that the positive charge is delocalized. And this is a good opportunity to pause and draw the alternative resonance form of this structure that shows the delocalization of positive charge in that structure. So look out for resonance when it comes to carbocations and the possibility of resonance in a carbocation that you might generate in the midst of a reaction mechanism. Carbocations are highly susceptible to one, two rearrangements, which shift the position of positive charge. This is particularly true when the migrating group is relatively small, hydrogens, methyl groups, although other alkyl groups can also do this, and it occurs when the product cation is more stable than the reactant cation. And so this is common for secondary carbocations, which can form in organic reaction mechanisms, but quite frequently rearrange if the structural conditions are right. Let me back up really quickly and just mention something about substitution pattern and cation stability. Methyl cations and primary cations so here we have a methyl cation, Me+, right? And here we have a primary cation with only one carbon group linked to the cationic center. These are so unstable that they're not observed in organic reaction mechanisms. So you won't see these in organic reaction mechanisms. Secondary carbocations, while not terribly stable, can form, and tertiary carbocations are stable enough that they form quite frequently. So when we end up with a secondary carbocation in the midst of a reaction mechanism, we'll want to look out for potential rearrangements. And to do this, we're going to look at the neighboring carbons and look for the potential for migration of a hydrogen or a methyl group or an alkyl group to create a more stable carbocation. So here, for example, we can notice that this carbon to the left of the cationic center has two hydrogens. And we can think about 
migrating one of those CH bonds over to create a new cation through electron flow like this, just taking the CH electrons and moving them over one carbon to the cationic center. This would lead to this carbocation right here, which is secondary. And of course, migrating the other CH bond would lead to the exact same structure. At the right-hand carbon, which is this one here, we have a hydrogen and a CH3. Now let's think about migrating this hydrogen, and quite frequently you'll want to think about moving CH bonds first. Well, that would involve electron flow like this, with that CH bond just popping over one carbon and leaving positive charge now on a tertiary carbon. Notice that this cationic center has three carbon groups connected to it. That's a tertiary carbon. Based on what we just talked about with stability trends of carbocations, we can predict the course of this rearrangement step by recognizing that the tertiary cation is going to be much more stable than the secondary. And in fact, this rearrangement in red is taking us from a secondary starting cation to a secondary product cation. So there's no big impetus for that rearrangement to occur. But the secondary to tertiary rearrangement here in purple does have a big thermodynamic impetus because this cation is more stable than the starting cation. And so this rearrangement will occur very rapidly because it's fully intramolecular happening inside one molecule and it leads from a less stable to a more stable product. Another thing you'll want to look out for here is the potential for generation of resonance stabilized cations. If I can shift positive charge via a 1-2 rearrangement such that I generate a resonance stabilized cation from one that is not resonance stabilized, that will occur very rapidly under the vast majority of circumstances. One last thing that I'll mention here is just to remark again that when we draw curved arrows, we show the movement of the electrons, not charge and not nuclei. So here it would be incorrect to draw an arrow starting from the plus symbol, right? To try to show the movement of the positive charge from here to here. To do that, we actually have to move the electrons and the electrons move kind of the opposite direction of the positive charge. Keep this in mind when you're drawing electron flows for one, two rearrangement steps.